this old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend Colin invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like, why not? Why not? Let's try it. Why not? Let's go. And I found like a like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor es de muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. Good afternoon to all our friends and family, wherever you are at this time watching. I want to thank God for you and for your faithfulness that you have tuned in every week to hear what God has to say in the time that we're living in. I want to say, keep praising God, keep exalting God, keep giving your testimony, keep making a joyful noise unto God because he is the rock of our salvation. The Bible reminds us that he that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I just want to remind you today that God is a faithful God. And the Bible reminds us that God being so faithful, he watches over his words to perform them and to bring about a good and expected end. So I want to encourage you. Today, we'll be having worship we will be also having the word shared by our beloved Pastor Hyacinth. And after that, we will be breaking bread. So I would like you to make sure that you have your bread and your wine ready for us to share later. But at this time, I just want us to enjoy worship with our sister, Jennifer Shield. And so may God bless you that you have a wonderful time. And after that, you will hear Pastor Isaac speaking to us. May God bless you.
In Jesus' name, have a wonderful service. God bless.
this is the love. Not that he loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is love. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah.
Faith. What is it? Being sure of our hope. Convinced of what we can't see. By faith, we understand the world was set in order at God's command. By faith, Abel offered God a greater sacrifice than Cain. And for his faith, God commended him as righteous. By faith, Noah trusted God and constructed an ark for the deliverance of his family. By faith, Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, his only son, believing God would still fulfill his promises. By faith, Moses chose to be mistreated with the people of God rather than enjoy sin's fleeting pleasure. By faith, God's chosen nation crossed the Red Sea on dry ground and praised Him as it swallowed up the Egyptians. By faith, Rahab the prostitute escaped destruction because she welcomed the spies in peace. Time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, David, and the prophets. By faith, they administered justice, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire. But others were imprisoned, murdered, and wandered in deserts, mountains, and openings in the earth. We are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So get rid of every weight, of every sin, and run. Run with endurance the race set before us. Your eyes fixed on Jesus. He is the champion and guide of our faith. For promised joy, he endured the cross, thought nothing of its shame, and having risen again, has been handed his deserved glory at the right hand of the throne of God. Greetings, everyone, in the precious name of Jesus. It's so good to have you with us again today, wherever it is that you're streaming in from. I want to let you know that it's not by accident that you have joined, but you are watching us because the Father has something to say. He has something to confirm. He has something to release so that when the streaming is over, you will be in no doubt that God is for you. Amen. And that he is wanting to bring you into the fullness of the things that he has for you. And that the fullness of what he has for you is not dependent or resting on um, the, the situations in the land. That a pandemic does not negate God's word over our lives. In fact, the scripture does tell us in, in, um, in Isaiah that darkness is upon the, the land, the gross darkness, the people, but he says, but over you, Upon you, his light has arisen. So there is no need for the light if light is already there. But when there is darkness, that's when the light is needed. And, and there is a light that God wants you to exhibit in this hour. There's a light that he wants you to shine forth. There is a, 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 a commanding of the darkness to, to just sort of dissipate, to 
roll away. He, he, he wants to let you know that you have power in your voice through your union with him to speak those things that be not as though they were and that the climate is just really ripe for your intervention in the ways that he would lead you to intervene and the way that he would lead you to pray and to declare. So Father, I just want to thank you again today for the power of your word. I want to thank you, God, that as we are listening today, wherever your people are, that every time we have the privilege and the access to hear your word, it is coming with something from you that we need to lend our ear to. Father, you let us know that God, today, if we hear your voice, we are not to harden our heart and we are to let the word of God dwell in us richly. So Father, I pray that you would just anoint the ears of your people. Let them be um, hearers of your word and doers of that word, that today they will hear you speaking, bringing that word of confirmation, Lord God, that word, Father God, that further solidifies the things that you have been speaking to them, that word of courage, Father God, that word to ignite fire and to set a, a blaze, Lord, a flame afresh a for you in their hearts. Today we thank you that your word will go for, forth with free course in the name of Jesus, unhindered by any satanic opposition, but let each one hear you speaking to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today as we come, I really want to just speak to you as I just sense the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to stir your heart in regards to faith and trust in God and, and pressing towards the things that he has for you and has for your family, has for the nations, has for the community, uh, wherever God has placed you, whatever the sphere of rule that he has given you, that you will begin to see a greater demonstration of him working in and through your life. And for those who might be in a place where they, they, you know, have wandered away from the Lord, um, but you're hearing, or those who have not um, yet made Jesus their Lord and Savior, I want to let you know that the word is still for you because God is wanting to let you know that, that the door is open for you. And today, as you hear his voice, then do not harden your heart. Today is a day of salvation. So I want to speak to you about faith today, and I want to begin by looking at Romans 5 and verse 19, and I'll be reading from the Passion Translation unless I state otherwise. So in Romans 5 and verse 19, it says that one man's disobedience opened the door for all humanity to become sinners. So also, one man's obedience opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. Perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. And I want you to get the contrast between the two. I want you to sort of seal at the moment um, a little bit and just, just after the, the, the streaming, maybe just go back and read the scriptures and just pause and, and think a while um, as to even what that verse is saying. It's drawing this contrast between the before state and the after state. And it is letting us know that one one man's disobedience had opened a door for all humanity to become sinners. It had opened a door for all degradation, all iniquities, all generational curses, you know, all manner of sins and 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 unholy acts, all kinds of stuff, everything that we would look at in, in this world that we know is a Opposed to God and opposed to the truth of his word, sin had opened a door to that through one man's disobedience. But we're so glad today that the story did not stop there and the scripture goes on to let us know that so also one man's obedience, and we're talking about obviously Jesus Christ who came and died upon the cross and declared that it is finished, that man's death had been paid in full, that one man's obedience opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. 
And so we thank God today because where a door was opened that came with all manner of evil, we want to thank him that another door was opened through Christ Jesus, that now we can walk through that door and have the life that he has destined, he had destined for us to live, that life of fellowship and relationship and union with him and seeing that life of the Christ working in and through us to demonstrate his kingdom here on earth. And so Romans 5 and verse 20 goes on to say, yet through those sin is shown to be wide and deep. Thank God his grace is wider and deeper still. And so for anybody who's watching me today, who um, are, are a bit like the prodigal is away from God, or for somebody who is has not yet even given their life to the Lord, I want to let you know that the price that was paid by Jesus to open that other door for us, there's nothing that goes lower than the blood that was shed on that cross. That no matter how far you have sung, the blood still goes further. And the fact that you're listening today is an invitation for you to um, come into relationship uh, with the Father. And so even though um, sin was shown to be wide and deep, uh, the writer says, thank God his grace is wider and deeper still. The whole outlook changes. Sin used to be the master of men and in the end handed them over to death. But now grace is the ruling factor with righteousness as its purpose, right standing in God as his purpose and its end, the bringing of men to eternal life of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when you read the latter part of that verse, especially like in the King James and some of the other versions, it's talk about reigning in life through Christ, that it, it really shows you that because of the transaction that happened at the cross, then the door that was opened through Jesus, that what that door does is allow us to reign in life through Christ, that we are no longer now defeated, but we can really live for real the resurrected life. We can reign in life through Jesus Christ. We are supposed to reign in life through Jesus Christ. This, we are told that we are kings and priests to God, and that means something. So today we see the, the, the parallel of what had happened at the door that was opened by sin, but we see how Jesus came and opened another door. And because of that door that was opened, then we now can reign in life through Christ Jesus. That even though sin was wide and 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 carried many things with it, but the grace of God went even deeper than sin had gone. And so today now we are in the privileged position of being able to make those choices for God every day, over and above every other choices that are presented for to us. Because even though we have gone through the right door, those of us who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we've gone through the right door, but still there are voices on the periphery, there are old lifestyle, there are old habits, there are old ways that are seeking to draw one back. Um, into that place of defeat and into that place of bondage and into that place of fear. And so we have to be daily making the choices, as Paul said about mortifying um, the deeds of the body. We have to be daily making those choices to be obedient to the voice of God, understanding that we are now, we are now through another door. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So as people who reign, as people who are reigning, as people who have come into relationship with God and are now reigning, there is a life that needs to be exhibited as a result of our reigning position. Amen. We weren't called and saved just to have a ticket out of hell and one into heaven. And so in between the here and the there, we are just sort of biding our time and treading water. No, we are actually called to do kingdom business. We are called to establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth. We are, we are called to display the glory of God. We are called to show that we are from a different kingdom, that we are from a different realm. You know, ambassadors, where they, when they go to another country, like they the embassy, the American embassy here 
in in England, you know, once that you are behind that gate and on that and that property, you're actually on USA soil. And what goes on um, in that embassy is reflecting the country that has sent them on assignment. They are arguing the case, for the want of a better word, of the country that has sent them on assignment. And what happens if they continually, if the ambassador continually speaks against what that country is for? After a while, that country will recall them because they are not benefiting um, and speaking and, and, you know, arguing on behalf of the country that has sent them and so we are now from a different country amen we 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 um stand for a different kingdom and we have to exhibit that kingdom we have to display that kingdom we have to show for that kingdom that is the mandate that is on our life and so romans um not romans sorry hebrews 1 uh, tells us and i'm still in the Passion Translation, it says now faith because it's going to take faith for us to live that reign in life. It's going to take faith for us to demonstrate that reign in life. In order for us to reign, we are going to have to live a life of faith in order to see the result of that faith in action. We reign through our faith. We reign through our belief in God. We reign through our trust in his word. And as we go through Hebrews, we see some people who did reign in their lives. Amen. Through and 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 as a result of reigning through um, the word of God and believe in the word of God, then we saw victories won um, as a result of that. So Rome faith, sorry, Hebrews um, 1 tells us now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. The testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's word. Because you see, our belief, our faith is not hanging out there and some airy fairy stuff. Our faith is actually resting on the word of God. So when we talk about faith, we are talking about believing God's word and putting our trust and our reliance and our hope and our assurance in that word that that word will perform, that that word will tunnel through every situation, that that word will always, as, as, as Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says, will always come back with what it was sent to do. It was always accomplished the task. It will never come back empty. So faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's word. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Isn't that powerful? He spoke, God spoke. And the invisible realm gave birth to all that we see. Wow, can't we just see at that moment? When we think about it, about all that we have seen, that the invisible realm, when we, when the word of God was spoken, uh, that the invisible realm um, deposited what was spoken into the physical realm. And so um, the scripture tells us, as it were, when you read it from the King James, that what we see was not created by things that were seen, but by things that was not seen. And that's the same power and ability that God has given to us. And we really want to take this on board today because in the coming days and in the days ahead, we, we are going to be, we are people who are going to need to know how to speak those things that be not as though they were. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Now, that just makes me smile. And so the scripture goes on to tell us that faith moved Abel to choose a more acceptable sacrifice to offer to God than his brother Cain. It says that faith lifted Enoch from this life. Amen. And he was taken up into heaven. 
And then the scripture goes on to tell us that without faith, it is impossible um, to please God. For when we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who seek him, that those who seek him with passion and with strength, that he rewards their faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And as we go on, we will begin to see that actually a lack of faith really boils down to disobedience because um, it's disobeying the word of God, it's disobeying what he has said, it's, it's doubting his word. And if we are in doubt and unbelief, then we are actually in sin, as um, Hebrews tells us. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if it's impossible to please God without faith, it means that I need to examine this issue a little bit more. I need to examine this faith. I need to examine myself in light of, the, of faith and see what it is that I am producing, what it is that I am doing. I am, am I pleasing God or am I in this place where I am doubting his word. And so I'm not seeing the things that I want to see and the things that I need to see. And the reason is that I am hearing God's word, but I am not believing his word. And so the scripture tells us in verse 7, it says that faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming even things that he had not seen. Faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about things that was coming, even things that he had never seen. But he stepped out in reverence, obedient to God, and built an ark and saved him and his family. So the scripture tells us that it's telling us that faith opened Noah's heart. It, I believe it means that Noah heard God and Noah believed God. In the face of the naysayers, in the face of negative things, in the face of um, the abuse that maybe he was getting because he's talking about things he has not seen and is building an ark for a flood that nobody has seen, for rain that no one has seen. And, and he's doing all of these things and there is no reference point for that. But because he believed God's word, his heart was open to do what God had asked him to do. And so he stepped out in a reverence obedience to God. And that obedience meant that he not only saved himself, but saved also his family. I, I just want to submit to us before we move on that what it is that the Lord is maybe asking you and, and I to do that at the end of that will not only save us, but can save others. That through that radical obedience, through that radical adherence to his word, even when we have no reference point for it, even when the other voices are saying, well, I don't think so, you know, we can just leave that alone for now, you know, that there is no need um, to, to, to do that or there is no need to trust anymore. Let's just give up on that situation. What is it that, that God is, is asking you to do that just seems so impossible, but a lot of lives, uh, uh, a lot of um, deliverances, a lot of salvations are hanging on the fact that you uh, believe that word and step out in reverent obedience. When I read that bit about Noah, I remember the children of Israel. And Hebrews 3 and verse 19 tells us that the same people, because we're talking about hearing the word, that Noah heard the word of God and, and believed the word of God and, and, and with no reference point um, to hang that word on, he still decided to step out on it. The contrast given uh, I would like us to look at is Hebrews 3 and verse 19. It says the same people who were delivered from bondage 
and brought out of Egypt by Moses were the ones who heard and still rebelled. They grieved God for 40 years by sinning in their unbelief until they dropped dead in the wilderness. The King James says their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Amen. So it is clear, as verse 19 said, that they could not enter into their inheritance because they wrapped their hearts in unbelief. Wow, isn't that powerful? It is clear they could not enter into their inheritance because they wrapped their hearts in unbelief. We see this when the spies went out to spy the land and they came back and, and um, 10 say, we can't do this. You know, the land is as God says, it's great, it's flourishing, it's powerful, it's mighty, it's yielding as he had said. Oh, there's just so many great things that's going on there. Look how fruitful it is. Look at the graves, look at the, the pomegranates. Look, oh, it's just wonderful. But there are giants in the land. And they started to murmur and complain and turn the hearts of the people and they decide they could not do it. And Joshua and Caleb said, yes, we can do this. But they decided they could not do it. So this is what Hebrews is talking about, that because they had wrapped their heart in unbelief, because they chose to believe uh, the sightings of the giants over and above what God has spoken, they ended up dying off in the wilderness and not entering into the fullness of the promise of what God had for them. He had intended that they come out of Egypt, make their way through the wilderness, enter into the promise. But because they did not agree with God's word, God agreed with their words. They murmured and complained. And he came into agreement with their words and said, okay, 40 years around this wilderness, this generation is going to die off. But as a sidebar, I just want to say that Joshua and Caleb, who were part of that generation, were still alive 40 years later to step into the promise because the word they believed kept them. Amen. His word cannot return to him void. So once I come into agreement with that word, that word has to fulfill over my life. Amen. And so it says that they wrap their hearts in unbelief. Oh my God, I pray today that none of us are wrapping our hearts in unbelief, that we are choosing even in this moment to say, God, I'm going to go and pick back up your word, that word you have spoken to me, that prophetic word over my life uh, that I had laid down through discouragement and, and frustration and every other stuff, you know, that person I've been praying for, but nothing has not been happening. The situations that are around me in general, um, that healing I'm praying for, but nothing has been happening. Lord, I'm going to go and pick up your word again because I'm not going to wrap my heart in unbelief, but I'm going to choose to believe that your word will speak and it will have its desired end. And so Hebrews 4 and 1 to 3 said, now God, has offered to us the same promise of entering into his realm of resting in confident hope. Now God has offered to us the same promise. When we come and, and came into relationship with Jesus, he has offered to us the same promise of entering into the fullness of the things that he has purchased for us on the cross. We are not going into a physical land per se, but there is a realm that we need to enter into, that we need to take, that we need to access where the fullness of God and the purposes of God and the plans of God begin to manifest in and through our lives. The things for which he has called us to and positioned us for and, and has um, place us in the kingdom for that we begin to realize that I am in the kingdom for such a time as this and it's not just a cute scripture that I am um, repeating because it sounds good and it's very poetic but I understand that I am in the kingdom for such a time as this I've left Egypt for a reason 
And the reason is that I should not die off in the wilderness, but I should access and enter in and lay hold of and make my own the promises of God that is over my life, that my life should demonstrate his power, demonstrate his goodness, demonstrate his greatness. And so he says, now God has offered to us the same promise of entering into his realm of resting in confident faith. So we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. That we embrace the fullness of his promise and not fail to experience it. For we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did yet they did not join their faith with the word that means they did not believe the word they did not rest their confidence and trust in the word instead what they heard didn't affect them deeply they doubted and in the parable of the sower it talks about the word that is sown um the seed that is sown and and how you know the, the, the it was just on shallow shallow ground and you know when the the cares of life um come up and it chokes the word out of them and and it talks about how the sun can can scorch um you know that that the word and and can cause it to to not take root and can cause it to not come back with the desired result because of how the word was received to begin with. And so it said that yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard did not affect them deeply for they doubted. They doubted that even though there were giants in the land, that God was greater. They doubted that God could take them through. They doubted that God could bring them out on the other side. They, they, they looked at the land and said it is as God said, but there are giants. I wonder what it is that you are progressing towards today, what it is that the Lord is asking you to move towards, but there are some giants in, your, in, in front of you. You can see some giants of whatever sorts that they might be. And, and those, those, those giants are, are wanting to loom large in front of you. But I want you to believe again today and receive again today that the giant is not the issue. If you believe God's word and move confidently forward, resting on his word, that giant will have to come down. For those of us who believe, it goes on to say, faith activates the promise. Faith activates the promise. Those of us who believe, faith activates the promise. I want you to say that with me. My faith will activate the promise. Now, when the children of Israel again came out of Egypt, heading towards um, the, the, the Red Sea, that large body of water, and Pharaoh's host hot on their heels behind them. And now they have a decision to make. And God in the midst of that, as, as the people um, um, grumbled, and, and God, Moses looked to God, God said, tell the people to go forward. That going forward activated the promise because God had delivered them from Egypt to deliver them into something. He didn't deliver them from Egypt so that they would just go and die on the seashore. He delivered them from Egypt so that they would go right into the promise of the things that he has for them. And so his plan was that he would take them through every Red Sea, take them through every wilderness experience and bring them into the promise of the things that he had for them. So when um, Moses told them to go forward and they started to go forward, the going forward activated the promise of God, activated the word, because the word of deliverance from Egypt was still over their lives. That God says, I've come down, I've heard your cry, I've come down to deliver you. So now that he's come down to deliver them, he's going to deliver them all the way. So that word of deliverance is still over their lives. It's up to them now to be able to go forward confidently on that, no matter what they face, to go forward confidently, understanding that the word of promise 
is going to be activated as they keep on going forward. The word of promise over your life will be activated as you keep on going forward confidently in the word of God. And when we, when faith activates the promise, what happens is that we experience the realm of confident rest. For we now begin to see the manifestation of God. We begin now to understand that he will deliver us from every and any situation. So even as I go through the Red Sea, he will take care of the enemy that's giving chase behind me. Because I'm moving forward on faith. But the enemy cannot move forward and follow me in that same way. Because he's not a participant in the faith walk that I am walking in. So if he's giving chase, he's going to be taken out. He is going to be taken out. And so when we move forward, oh, that is for somebody today, wherever you are, you might have just come to a standstill. You might have just stopped for a while. I just want to let you know that God is wanting to say to you today that as you move forward confidently on my word, regardless of what you see up ahead, regardless of what you see looming, regardless of the voices that are speaking, regardless of the negatives of what it is they're saying, if you just move confidently forward, your faith and your and the moving of you pressing towards the promise will activate it and it will cause the doors to open and the situations to to abate and for you to go forward on dry land if it's a goliath the word of promise the word of promise that you're moving forward on will make sure that that goliath is taken out and so the scripture tells us that by faith even as Sarah embraced the miracle power to conceive, even though she was barren. We are now back in Hebrews and verse 11 says, Sarah's faith embraced the miracle power to conceive, even though she was barren and was past the age of childbearing. For the authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise. And she tapped into his faithfulness. The authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise. The authority of her faith rested in the one who made the promise. And she tapped into his faithfulness, tapped into the faithfulness of the God who cannot lie because his word had said and she believed that word and that word activated for her in due season. And so the scripture tells us that all these heroes these heroes of faith, that they all died still clinging to the faith, not receiving all that has been promised, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. It says that they all lived their lives on earth as those who belonged to another realm. I want to let you know today that you belong to another realm, that you might be walking around in this earth, but you belong to another realm. You were birthed from another realm, from the kingdom of, of, of heaven into this earth to accomplish your purpose. You are walking around in this earth, but you are a pilgrim. You're passing through. You're here to accomplish a task. And God is equipping you to accomplish that task. And so as you believe him, as you believe him, your faith will activate the things that you're needed to, to, to use in the season to go from where you are to where you need to be. And so the scripture tells us that through faith that um, Isaac um, started to speak over, over his children, over his his lineage, that through faith he did that, and that Abraham's faith made it logical to him that God would raise Isaac from the dead. And so symbolically what had happened is that he had even received him from the dead. And so Abraham believed that the faith in God would mean that Isaac would be raised up from the dead. And so we see the scripture goes on to tell us that the power of faith prompted Isaac, which is what I was saying before, to impart a blessing to his sons, Jacob and Esau. 
wouldn't be around to see the fulfillment of all of that. But through faith, he imparted a blessing to them. And then it tells us that Jacob worshipped in faith, in faith's reality at the end of his life. And leaning on his staff, imparted a prophetic blessing upon each of Joseph's sons. Scripture tells us that faith inspired Joseph and opened his eyes to see into the future. For as he was dying, he prophesied about the exodus of Israel out of Egypt and gave instructions that his bones were to be taken from Egypt with them. It says that faith prompted the parents of Moses at his birth to hide him for three months because they realized that he was exceptional. They weren't afraid of the king's edict. Faith enabled Moses to choose God's will. Amen. I want faith to enable you today, belief and trust in God's word, to choose God's will. For although he was raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he refused to make that his identity. Amen. Whatever it is that is hanging around you, that is hovering, that is wanting to to give you another identity. Today, I want to encourage you to make a choice. Make a choice that you will refuse to have any other identity than the one that the Father has given to you. So instead, Moses preferred faith's certainty. Faith's certainty. Moses preferred faith's certainty above the momentary enjoyment of sin's pleasure. Oh, faith's certainty. Amen. I really, I really love how the Passion um, Translation put that, that he preferred faith's certainty above the momentary enjoyment of sin's um, pleasures. And then it says that faith stirred Moses to perform the rite of Passover and sprinkle the lamb's blood to prevent the destroyer from harming the firstborn. Faith stirred Moses to do what God had commanded him today to do. Faith stirred him to, to put the blood over the doorpost. I want to just believe God today that faith will be stirred in you. Stirred in you to rise up in power. Stirred in you to rise up and believe that God's word is true. Stirring, stirred in you to believe the impossible. Stirred in you to believe that he that has begun a good work is well able to take it through to completion. Stirred in you to believe for the impossible. To understand that God's word don't even have to have a reference point. Noah did not have one. All he had was the word. That's all he was hanging on to was the word. And at the end of the day, the word of God fulfilled. Hebrews talks about how, you know, the, the other people of faith like Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets um, that through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened on their promises and pulled them into their reality. Let me say that again for somebody. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled it into their reality. Amen. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled it into their reality. Amen. There are some promises that you have. I want to stir your heart today and encourage you to stand again and to believe God's word, to take those promises and to pull them into reality, to pull it out of the unseen and into the seen, to let the faith of God shut the mouths of lions, whatever is in your in your sphere, what whatever lion is roaring at you, amen, and threatening you, that God, your faith will be stirred today to pull the promises of God into your reality and shut the mouths of lion to put out rage and fire, amen, that your weakness would, would turn into strong faith, 
amen, that you will be mighty warrior in battle, that even in, in your battle, you would be so strong in your faith that you would, you would be able to get and release angelic help for the things that you are battling and warfaring for. Standing on the word of God and believing the word of God and, and so that no matter what happens, God will send help even if it's angelic help, to make sure that you are a victor <coughs> in the battle. So as I close, I want to just say to you that this might seem like it's a totally um, different, um, different word, but it is the same word that God is saying that I have seen you and I'm, I'm just looking at the, the scripture from uh, Revelation 3 8 as speaking to the Philadelphia church. I, I've seen you and be, I have now set before you a wide open door that no one can shut. I heard that word in my spirit as I was preparing uh, that God is saying I have opened a door before you that what is a pandemic, what is a climate of confusion and of fear and all kinds of things are happening, but I have set an open door before you. This is your moment to rise. This is your moment to stand up. This is your moment to display my glory. <coughs> this is your moment to see my power. This is your moment to see my strength. I have set an open door before you and no man can shut it. That this door that was opened, this other door when, as we talked about at the beginning, where, where Jesus had died and so a new door had opened up. And he's letting you know that through this door, I have other open doors for you. I have other open doors of opportunity. I have other open doors of victory. I have other open doors of deliverance. I have other open doors where when you walk through it, you will see signs, you will see wonders, you will see deliverances. Behold, I have set before you an open door. I want you to go for this open door. Don't be put off by the climate. Don't be put off by the situation. Don't be put off by how difficult it might seem. Remember that my, my people were facing a Red Sea, but I parted it so that they could go through. Remember that I brought water out of the rock. Remember that I turned the bitter water sweet. Remember that I am the God who is able to do over and above all that you can even ask or think according to my power that is working within you. So he's wanting to let you know today that I have set before you an open door. And as you trust me, as you believe in me, as you rest your, your trust and your faith on my word, as you believe what I have said, and you continue to trust me, you will see the doors open up before you. When I open up these doors, no man can shut them. These doors of utterances, where you will speak the word into dark places, where you will declare, let there be light, and there is light, where you will speak over the yokes and bondages over my people, and all the chains will have to fall, where I will begin to give you those dreams and those visions and let you know what is up ahead so that you will not be taken unaware by the enemy. I have set before you an open door. And as you trust me and rest in me and confidently go forward in me, you will see those doors open before you. You will perceive them. You will see them. You will be able to almost even touch them. So today, I just want to just declare, God, that by your spirit, Father, as your people have listened to your word, may it rest in their spirit in such a mighty and awesome way, and may it begin to continue to reveal, continue to enfold, continue to bring wisdom, continue to bring strength, continue to impart grace, that they would confidently, Father God, go towards those open doors and see the miraculous of you as they by faith receive your word, rest upon it, and see your word activate the promises in their lives. Lord, thank you for each one today. In the name of Jesus, amen. And as we go towards communion 
now with Pastor Glenn. I want you to just carry that word of faith with you um, as you partake of, of, the, of the emblems of the bread and the wine and you remember that it is finished. The debt has been paid in full and that now faith is the key as it were that unlocks the door and so as you believe in what was enacted at the cross and the redemptive work of the cross then you will see the provisions of the work of Jesus Christ in and through your life so let us go to communion with Pastor Glenn and we will see you on the other side God bless you yes wasn't that a wonderful word from our pastor, Ayasin, reminding us of the importance of faith. And so I just want to encourage us to exercise our faith, to raise our faith, to believe God more, to trust God more, and see what God will do. So as we prepare now to break bread, I want you to Get your bread and hold your bread in your hands. And I just want you to consider and think about it. That Jesus knew he would go to the cross. Knew that he was going to die. But he called his disciples together. And he said this institution in order before he went. And just like the children of Israel, in Egypt they had the Passover. Here we now have our Passover. And so I want you to take that bread and I want you to consider and think about it. Jesus died so that you and I could live and not just live any sort of life but a life that is worthy of the price that he paid for our salvation and so as you hold this bread I want you to remember it Until he comes. His body was given. I do not want to forget that. His body was given. For me. His body was given. For you. And sometimes we can get caught up. In all the things that are going on. And sometimes we can just. Hear, hear about. His body was given. But we don't know the seriousness or recognize the seriousness of it. That a life was given so that you and I can have life and have it in its abundance. So as you hold that bread, I want you to just think about it. And just with me. Father, we thank you for the body of Jesus that was given so that we can be here today celebrating in this manner, being brought back into remembrance that the life was given for us. We who were nobody we are now somebody in the kingdom of God. And so, Father, as we take this bread, we are acknowledging the body of Jesus Christ being broken for us, being given for us. And so we say, until you come, Lord, we will continue to do this until you come and we are doing it with the saints of the most high and we are doing it 
with Jesus, the Holy Spirit being present with us. And so we say thank you in Jesus' name. So I say, let's eat. Amen. Bible also says that Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks and he says this is a cup of the new testament the new covenant I'm so glad that he made a covenant with us we were not there in the upper room but as we take this, we can feel the presence of Almighty God. We can feel the presence of Jesus Christ with us today. And he says, without the shedding of his blood, there's no forgiveness of my sins. I stand another day. I've seen a new day when I woke up this morning and I stand another day with the acknowledgement that my sins has been forgiven. Your sins as you partake has been forgiven. And so we celebrate, we hold it and we say, on till you come Jesus until you come physically until you come we celebrate and we remember the price that was paid thank you for the forgiveness of our sins thank you we can come humbly let both to the throne of grace and so I say thank you Father as we partake of this wine, in Jesus' name, until you come. And so, Father, we just want to give you thanks. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify. We magnify you. You are an awesome God. You have been there for us. You have delivered us. You have set us free. You have translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your son. And we want to thank you today that your hands is upon each and every one of us. And it is you who order and direct our steps. So we want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're a God who hears and answers prayer. And so we want to bless your name today. We want to declare your faithfulness. We want to declare your goodness. We want to declare your loving kindness. And so, Father, I pray the blessing of Almighty God upon your people today. I pray that they will be blessed in their going out and in their coming in. I pray that they will be blessed with that which they put their hands to do, that it will prosper. I pray that they will be in good health. I pray that they will prosper as their soul prosper. And I pray, God, that you will keep your hands upon your children. That you will lead them from victory unto victory. So we bless you, we honor you, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name. 
Be blessed, saints of the Most High. Be blessed. We will now have a closing song by Sister Jennifer. God bless you. Have a fruitful week. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, it says, Who by worrying can add to their life? Pandemic. Do not worry about tomorrow. Pagans run after these things. National emergency. Philippians 4 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My are melting so fast. Miss a An interesting fact about humanity is that whatever you feed grows. A financial pandemic. If you feed your faith, it grows. If you feed your fears, they grow. It's all spiral very quickly. It's going to get worse. Some have to live and some have to die. Realize that our time is better spent talking to the Father than getting all worked up and reading and feeding our minds with the news and the media about what everybody is saying about how this is doom and gloom and how money, which we have hoped in, is lost. Hope not in money. Hope in your Father, your God, Jesus Christ, your Savior. Have your faith and use it. Walk according to it. Whatever you feed grows. This is the time to press into the church, lean into the church, to be surrounded by God's people. We can offer prayers for one another. We can offer hope to one another. We can speak words of truth to one another. If you feast on the word of God and you renew your minds around the truth, your faith, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you go to the news and you read article after article after quote after talking head and you continue to feed those fears, they grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Whatever you feed grows. Today, did you wake up this morning and feast on the word of God and go to him in prayer? Or did you feed your fears?